Hello, 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 and hola. If you're here, you know what time it is. It is time to wine with Wanda. Thank you so much for tuning in for episode 35 of my Instagram live series. We can't share a glass of wine in person, but I'm so glad that we're still able to connect via technology. So today we are traveling to the Alentejo region of Portugal. I'm very excited. And my guest today leading us through that journey will be chief winemaker and co-owner of Casa Relvas, Alexandre Relvas. So I'm really excited to join him. Now I've only been to Portugal once, it was in 2018, and it was specifically to visit the wineries in Alentejo. So I'm really excited for this time to kind of take my palate on this journey and to revisit those beautiful memories. It's such a wonderful, wonderful just region in terms of the wine, the food, the landscapes, the people, it really has it all. So before I bring Alexandre on, I just want to say that, um, it's a family-owned winery. They have a strong commitment to sustainability and really they're stewards of the environment and they melt tradition and innovation. Now, one of the most unique things about Alentejo is their use of amphora. Now, a lot of winemakers around the world are starting to experiment and embrace them, but it's been a constant in Alentejo since Roman times outside of the Republic of Georgia. It's the only place where amphora have been in continuous use. So we're going to talk to Alexandri more about that as well. So one of the wines we're going to taste today was actually made in amphora. This is Casa Relva's Artera Amphora 2020. It's a red blend and that retails for $22.99. And then we have their Herdad de Sao Miguel. And this is also red blend. This is 2019. And this is Escola dos Analogos. You've probably figured out that I don't speak Portuguese, but I'm trying. I'm trying. So anyway, let's bring the guest. I see some friends out there. Thank you for tuning in. Let me send some waves while we're waiting for our guest. Ah, there he is. <laughs> Hi, Vanda. How are you doing? Good. How are you now? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Because I know it's not Alexander, which is the American yes. English version. Just, just do Alex, it's easier. Alex, okay. <laughs> it's it, in Portuguese, it's Alexandre. Alexandre, ah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, I'll keep practicing for next time. Well, thank you so much for, for tuning in and joining us today. It's a pleasure, thank you for the invitation. Yes, it's uh, the new way of visiting and get together, so it's a pleasure to be here with you today That's to talk true. a little bit about Alentejo and Casarovas. Wonderful. So for those folks who maybe aren't familiar with Alentejo, before we talk about your winery, why don't you situate us geographically where the region is within Portugal? Okay, that's something always that I something do because I cannot talk about Casa Relvas without talking about Alentejo. Okay. So geographically speaking, Alentejo it's located on the southern part of Portugal. It's a, a quite big area in Portugal. It's a small area com comparing to, to Texas, for example, but quite small mm -hmm. area. But it's around 30% of Portuguese area. And it's an area which is very interesting because it goes from the sea into the border with Spain. And it goes from the zero meters of altitude to the 700 meters. And uh, there's a huge diversity of uh, soils from sand to clay to limestone. And, but something which we have in Alentejo from one point to the other, it's the climate. The, the sun shines more than 2,000 hours per year in Alentejo. Oh, nice. Uh, which make uh, that almost all kinds of fruits ripe well in Alentejo. And then depending of the soil and uh, the, the facing you have, you can have very nice spots to plant vineyards. Great. Well, thank you for that. So tell us a little bit about your family's winemaking history in the region. Okay. But also, uh, Alentejo, it's a, a place which has 30% of the area mm -hmm. and uh, less than 10% of the people. So it's a ah. place where we have big landscapes without cities, big farming. Uh, Portugal used to live a dictatorship until 74. And until that time, Alentejo used to be considered the, the, the region to produce grains and meat. 
Okay, we seem to freeze for okay. So Yeah, I did notice that when I was there you could drive for miles <laughs> yeah. and not see people, just beautiful open landscapes. Yeah. It's all, we we when we talk about the Lentes, we talk about good people, people that li like to get together, to mm -hmm. share meals and stories around the table. And uh, mostly of the people we are, uh, like the French say, bon vivant. Ah. <laughs> so my family, or originally, we are not from here. My mother family is from the north of Portugal. They used to be producing wine for several generations on the north of Portugal okay. in a region called Beira. My father's family, uh, they used to live in Angola, which used to be part of Portugal in 74. And mm -hmm. they came back uh, on 74. And together with my mother, my father uh, made, uh, bought Herdade São Miguel on the 90s and began this farming adventure of the family in Alentejo. I'm the fifth generation of farmers in the family together with my brother Antonio, which is working already uh, here with us. I'm the, the oldest brother, the oldest of five. And uh, all the project had begun at Herdade São Miguel, where... ...our best terroir. It's a vineyard of 35 hectares planted mm -hmm. in uh, clay and schist soils in a very valley um, area. I can show you because I'm here just... Oh, oh, oh that's so beautiful. And uh, then we, we had invested in different regions of Alentejo. And nowadays we own a, around 250 hectares of vineyard uh, a little bit uh, in different areas of Alentejo, but mainly Redondo, where we are. Uh, and then Évora, which is the sub-region which is next to, um, to Redondo, and then more on the south in a region which is very known for uh, white wines called Vidigueira. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went there as well. Okay, so Casa Ravas nowadays, we are a, a, a group of 90 people that work every day uh, to bring to to our customers' house, wi nice wines at the fairest price possible. Uh, we are very committed with local community and uh, it's our main point in sustainability, but we are also very committed with the region itself as uh, environment. What more can I say to you about Casa uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a short story, but it's... Uh, well, it's a short you... story and a long story because as you said, you're fifth generation. So did you always know that you would go into the family business or was it something that came later for you? No, no, it came later. I had no pressure at all. I had pressure to don't come. <laughs> um, actually, I, I was not the best student in the world. And uh, I, 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 was not, I was a good student, but not very involved in school. Okay. okay. Um, and um, I went to the uh, to the business school of Lisbon, and after one year, I was sure that that was for sure what I don't want to do in my life. Okay. And uh, and nowadays I make a lot of uh, things that I I I supposed to learn on the rest of the four years that I I, I don't been there. But then, so I went to, to France to study viticulture in Bordeaux. Okay. And then I stayed there for two, three years. And then my father invited me to come work to Casa Relvas as a cellar master. Okay, ah. so not, not even the winemaker, the guy who took care from the barrels and everything. So, and then it was a journey to, to become the, the CEO of Casarellas. Then I became wine, main winemaker at Herdazzo Miguel Winery, which is a small uh, premium winery we have. Then I began uh, being the chief winemaker, then the chief winemaker and marketing. And nowadays I'm the, the CEO of, uh, of Casarellas.
Wow. Well, it seems like your father had a lot of faith and confidence in your talent. How is it working together, a family business? It's uh, my, my father. It's a, a, a kind of hero for us, but it's uh, it's uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's very easy. It's sometimes what's hard is to uh, to know where work ends and family begins. Mm. But uh, as we are a family and family is very present on the, the company, we are uh, five or six people from the family working on the winery. Um, it's and then Nuno, which is winemaker, and Fernanda, which is the financial and logistic manager. They work here from the beginning. They are part of the family as well. So it's. Uh, I think I, I like a lot to work with my father and my brother, which are more on the, the head management. And then my wife, she takes care of domestic market. Oh, nice! Um, she's a key accountant for the the supermarkets and cash and carries in Portugal. Okay. So we are used to. I think it's uh, sometimes it's easier be, because sometimes you arrive home and you're not very happy and you had problems on the work, and the other part of you who, uh, doesn't understand very well. You are not happy, and I think when you need to travel sometimes, and I hope to go soon again. I go two three weeks to the U.S. And I, it's easier to my wife to understand that I go work, even if I go mm -hmm. to a lot of restaurants and I, I meet very nice people, but it's about work. Yeah. Uh, so it sometimes can be easy to, to have someone which is on the, the company as well. Exactly, that understands. So you mentioned you studied in Bordeaux. So did you find, did you choose Bordeaux because were you drinking a lot of those wines? Or I noticed we're going to be tasting blends today. So when I think of Bordeaux, I think of red blends. So what prompted you to want to choose Bordeaux for your wine studies? I think Bordeaux, it's one of the most beautiful wine regions in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's also one of the most difficult wine regions in the world. It's a region that you should have an, a lot of knowledge how to work the vineyard and uh, a place where you have a lot of difference between vintages. Mm -hmm. So you need to be very, very professional to work on the vineyards. I think in general speaking, or not a lot of, of place, but in Alentejo, it's easier to have a good crop than it is in Bordeaux. But mm. Bordeaux can turn more special in some spots if you work with perfection, okay? Uh, is the region where I was closer because it where, where was where I was working. Mm -hmm. It's a, a region with limestone soils, not very warm, quite with a lot of rain, and they make some of the more magic wines in the world. So, but they need really to work. So, I think in terms of viticulture, Bordeaux it's one of the best places in the world to learn, because they work also very traditional. Yeah. And you cannot go modern without knowing very well the roots and the traditional of viticulture. Excellent point. The other thing I want to talk about before we get into the wines is a bit about your commitment to sustainability <coughs> and environment. So has it been that way from the beginning or something that has evolved over time in your approach to, to viticulture? It's something that uh, without knowing, we were doing for a long time. Uh, we, it was, we didn't call that sustainability because mm -hmm. it was just our way of work. But then a few years ago, Alentejo region made something which is uh, the sustainability plans of Alentejo, like California, sustainable California they, they, they mm -hmm. did. And we, we were part of the development and we were pioneers on the, the beginning of the project. And we figure out that uh, on their goals, we were like 3.8 in four in all the goals, you know? And we said, okay, but we do all this. We didn't communicate at all. With very small changes, we can have four on four in a lot of things. 
And like I told you, our main uh, Portugal is not, uh, it's still, a, 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 it's in Europe, but it's not the richest country in Europe. It's mm -hmm. not the poorest, but it's uh, uh, on the, the last ones. And one of the things we, we, we pay attention the most, and sorry for the ambientalists, but is the people. Okay, so we are very committed here with old people, with uh, children, with people with diseases, and we invest a lot to create uh, good conditions for the people around us uh, that are not, uh, that have some problems, okay? Uh, financial problems mm -hmm. or mental problems or there's a, something that is happening a lot in the world, not only in Portugal, but in US as well, I believe. That course, old, yeah. old people that it's put aside and nobody come to see them. And we, we invest a lot on this. On viticulture, uh, or in uh, uh, talking about environment. Uh, in Alentejo, we have a lot of problems with water, uh, mm -hmm. long periods of drought. So most of our investment and attention, it's on the water. We had invested a lot on the last few years and we have 100% uh, of the water used on the winery which is recycled uh, to be used in irrigation also on the irrigation because here the vineyards and olive trees they are irrigated we are managing uh, and investing in technology to ensure the minimum uh, use of water per kilo produced mm -hmm. And uh, so water, it's our main concern in terms of uh, sustainability. But then, of course, the soils, the CO2, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's, uh, I will share with you, I will ask Lorraine to share with you our sustainability report. Oh, that'd be it's, great. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of things there. But I think we could, we could do a live only with that matter and, <laughs> and stay for one hour and then go again. Of course. So which wine are we going to start with today? I, I would suggest to... to begin with the, 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 the Anfora. Okay, perfect. So this is your 2020 Art Terra Tinto and Tinto. Um, Art Terra. Exactly. Okay. So it's a blend. So 50% Aragonesh, 40% Trincadera. And 10% Moreto. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> Fantastic. You look like a Portuguese. <laughs> Wonderful. So let's talk about Amphora before we even taste the wine. How that, what, I mean, it's just such an important part of the Alentejo story. Yeah, you, you mentioned on the beginning of uh, this conversation that uh, Alentejo, uh, so the, uh, it's using and for us for a long time. It's not the oldest mm -hmm. place. The oldest place is Georgia, of course. Uh, but the uh, Alentejo, it's using and for us in a little bit different way of Georgia. Uh, as the and for us they, here, they are out of earth. So on a, normally on a garage or a, a cell from, from people. And um, it arrived here with the Romans. And uh, it's a... a, a on the countryside, not on the biggest villages of Lentejo, on the countryside, almost everybody has a small and far on the garage and they make their own wine. And we need to thank them because that's due to them that we didn't lose the tradition. Because companies like Casa Relvas and, and other companies, we forgot and for us for a while. And mm -hmm. that, the truth, we need to say, it was due to the Lentejo population, which are not professionals, that we didn't lose uh, the, the, the tradition. And that's important to say because we need to respect them a lot, okay? And, uh, and, and we do, but we, we need to continue respecting them. So in Alentejo, by tradition, then there's, you can use the Anfora wherever you, you, wherever you want, how you want, of course, but the traditional Anfora wines in Alentejo and it's how art terra is done. Mm -hmm. It's you, you have the amphoras are not very big. The, the maximum biggest amphoras are like 2,500 kilo amphora, which is already a, a quite big amphora. It's uh, higher than us. And, and then the amphoras are lined inside 
with uh, bee wax and pine resin. Okay. Okay, the, on the traditional way. And then we harvest in September, uh, end of August, September, when the, the grapes are ready. We put a little bit of steams on the bottom of the amphora, and then we put the berries on the top. We try to don't crush too much the berries, if not you have a big extraction. And we uh, keep, we do that, of course, without temp control, uh, temperature control. And uh, normally the wines are taken from the skins on St. Martin's Day, which mm -hmm. is the 11th November. Oh, okay. So we have a long period of aging, of uh, fermentation, in con of skin contact. On the reds, sometimes you, have, you will have for sure uh, nice, very, very nice aromatic, and normally not a lot of color, and very silky tannins. Normally those wines, they are conversation wines, they are wines that people drink, uh, used to drink by the end of the day, sharing a cheese or a sour cheese or something. The whites as well, uh, they have a lot of color. They, so they are like almost orange wines because they mm -hmm. stay two, three months in contact with the skins and they are a bit rusher than a, the a white wine normally is. On this 2020 and four, uh, we have Aragonese. Aragonese, it's uh, Tempranillo, Tempranillo in Spain. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at the color, you know, it's not overly concentrated. You can see through it. It's a bit translucent. Very fresh yeah. on the nose. Very fresh. It's 2020. It's a wine which mm -hmm. has been bought. It's on the way to the U.S. We oh, sent okay. the samples in, uh, by Cole here. <laughs> it's a wine when you, you still, old people here in, in Alentejo, when they taste those kind of wines, they say, it smells like wine. Ah. <laughs> you know, it's a wine where you can uh, feel a lot the freshness and the mm -hmm. fruitiness of the grapes. Yeah, it kind of smells like you just crushed some grapes in your hands. It's very fresh and fragrant. It has quite light mm. uh, color. Yeah. Very f nice, nice acidity, but very, very easy, easy to drink. But easy to, to drink with nice acidity which means that you can drink the second glass without being fed of the wine, which drinkability as producer and winemaker is one of the most important characteristics we have, we, we need to have in a wine. It's really pretty. You know, for the other two grapes in the blend, for those of us who aren't as familiar, can you describe what Trincadera and Moreto bring to okay, the blend course. with the, Trinca the Tempranillo? Trincadera, it's maybe my favorite grape. It's a grape... Uh, which is uh, present in Alentejo a lot. It's the, the second most planted grape. Even it's declining. It's a grape that if we need to compare with another grape, we could compare with the Pinot Noir. It's a, a Pinot mm -hmm. Noir for a, 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 a warm climate. <clears throat> it's a, a grape which has a lot of uh, more vegetal aromas, not a lot of color. Uh, but it's a grape which is on the vine. It's very interesting because it's a, a, a grape that always protects uh, the the plant. So we, you, even if it's very warm, you still have the leaves of Trincadera showing green and protecting the, the mm -hmm. grapes, everything. So it's very well adapted. I think with the, the porcarization of the wines, it had lost a lot of space because okay. it's not a full body, full of tannins, full of color wine. But I think it's one of the grapes in future. Mureto, it's a very nice grape in my opinion to have in a blend. It's a grape with very small color. Okay. Very, very tough for the vineyard. So it can come drought, it can come heat, everything. It's always, Mureto, it's always good. It's a grape that ripe very, very late on the season. And it's a grape that uh, it's uh, very small use nowadays because it normally has some like kind of foxy aromas, like very mm -hmm. rustic, you know? 
and it's nice to have like in 10 the, the 5 to to 20 percent in a blend but more than that it will make a lot of uh, character to the wine and uh, like Trincadeira, it's uh, had dropped the plantations of that grape and there's less and less uh, grapes uh, vineyards of Moreto, which for me it's uh, a pity but it's life before we move to the next one i'm wondering how do you decide which grapes will go into amphora is it after are there certain characteristics that you're looking for that make those grapes a better option for amphora as opposed to steel or oak? What are you looking for when you decide to make the amphora wines? Uh, okay, so the, the choose of the, the grape varieties mm -hmm. was a, a choose made uh, after the tradition of the amphora wines. Those used to be the three main grapes on the amphora mm -hmm. wines in Alentejo. And then we always choose vineyards that give uh, nice acidity and uh, uh, skins with good quality. Because when, how you have three months of skin contact, mm -hmm. you need the skins to be tough. Of course. If not, yeah. you have a, a past on the end and not a wine. So you have particular vineyards that are focused on the wines that will be for amphora? Specific yeah, plots. These, okay. these plots, they come from different vineyards. It's not a single mm -hmm. vineyard. Okay, so for example, Aragonés, it's from Herdad São Miguel, and Trincadeira and Moreto, uh, they come from uh, a mountain that today you don't see very well. Okay. Which is there. On the, you don't see, but it's quite uh, near from here. But it's... Uh, it's a, a mountain with like 400 meters of altitude and it, uh, it with very nice rocky spots where gr grapes go grow well. Great. All right, so let's move to the second one. So I'm going to let you pronounce this one and introduce it for us. <laughs> it's Escolha. Escolha. That means choice and enologos, that means winemakers. Ah, okay. So for those tuning in, this is the 2019 Vintage. It retails for about $22.99 in the U.S. It is also a red blend, and I'm going to let Alex describe the blend and a little bit about the wine for us. So uh, first of all, I would like, if it's possible, to, to, to tell you a little bit about why we make this wine and uh, sure absolutely go right ahead and uh, i think it's uh, in, in, interesting and you understand better the wine after that okay it's, nunu and i uh, we worked together for since 2006 so quite a long time ago and we are good friends even after work we have we share a passion which are the the motorbikes the, the motocross Oh. And almost every weekend we go together and we go together to make motocross. So we are good friends, which is very good. But when we have discussions on the blends, sometimes it can go rough, of course, because <laughs> there is not that thing you have with your, your, your colleagues on the... Um, on the work that it's, I don't know the name in English, but in Portugal it's called Ceremonia. Okay. And uh, so sometimes we, we, we offend each other with bad names and everything. And one day we told, uh, we, we need to make a wine without discussion uh, and make, I choose my favorite wines and you choose your favorite ones and we'll do something uh, good, but without discussion. And you know, winemakers they look to the to the vineyards and to the the, the wines um, a little bit like the grandparents. They use they look to the kids. Mm -hmm. So the parents they don't have, but the grandparents they have a favorite one, and it's normal, you know. So it's very hard for a winemaker or a grandparent if you say no, the wine is from parcel. This plot is not that good as you say, and uh, so, and sometimes we get in love from a plot of vineyard mm -hmm. and uh, you, after that, you will get in love 
about the must, and then you get in love about the wine. So we took the decision to blend his favorite wine and my favorite wine without discussions, no fight. Ah. So this wine and the, the, the grapes, they can change with the vintage. The 2019, it's one of the most beautiful vintages in Alentejo. And here we have a blend of Alicante Boucher, which is the main brand, the main grape at Casa Ralvas. And it's a very, it, it's planted as well in US, in California. It's a, mm -hmm. a, a grape with a lot of color, a lot of concentration, a lot of tannins, but with nice acidity. Blended with Toriga Nacional and Toriga Franca, two very traditional grapes of Douro, the main grapes of Vinho do Porto, but grapes which are very, very, very present in, in Alentejo and in Casa Rovas as well. The, then the, the wine is aged for nine to 12 months, depending on the vintage mm -hmm. in uh, oak barrels. Something at Casa Rovas we only use for the red wines, oak barrels. Uh, we don't use new oak for the red wines. We believe that in Alentejo, the, the best thing the wines have is the, the the pureness of the aromas. And uh, so we want the, the barrel to make the, the wines more complex, but not to give flavors and aromas. So how many vintages of, of this blend of, of you and Nunu? How many have I you made? I think we make it since 2009. Oh, okay. So it must be something you look forward to <laughs> every yeah. year. And here's the, the label. <coughs> Fabulous. Okay. I'm a little richer in color, definitely, than the um, the Amphora wine. Yeah, a lot going on in the nose here. You get fruit, spice, a little floral. Mmm. I like it. It's um has a richness to it, but still very fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wine Soft, with a, sweet a, tannins. A, a, a lot of aging potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, I think it can be dr drunk now, but it will be better, of course, with one, two years. And uh, then depending on your taste, it, it, because there's people that don't like old wines and we cannot, it's when you don't like, we don't like. That's a wine for sure that will be fantastic in 10 years. Uh, here on Chris. the nose. No, please go ahead. Go ahead. You can feel very well the, the, the three grapes. The Alicante okay. gives a lot the the, the balm and the, the spices. Then Toriga Nacional, the more floral side of the wine, more mm -hmm. violet. And then the Toriga Franca, which gives a little bit more the concentrated fruit and uh, like the, the red berries. Do you have a favorite food pairing that you, that you and Nunu, when you open a bottle of this, is there something you like to eat with it? <laughs> you know, I'm very, when it's not raining, I have here my- Ah, the grill. My grill, so I, I grill a lot of meat there, uh, a lot of veal, but also a lot of lamb. We are lamb producers at Casa mm -hmm. uh, um, I think the grilled meat, it's uh, a little bit like on the wine. I, I want when the meat is good, I want to have that just grilled with salt and pepper and don't have a lot of aromas. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that uh, uh, this wine would respect very well uh, uh, a nice uh, piece of veal with bone and uh, made uh, uh, rare. I like rare, but then it depends a little bit on you. But then if you choose as well a pork, uh, a pork with a little bit more of spicy, I think it will be well as well. You know, it's almost lunchtime here. You're making me hungry. And here <laughs> it's almost quite... dinner time. So it's time to fire up the, the barbecue. So when the world reopens again, do you welcome visitors? Do you have a tasting room? Is there a visitor's experience that you offer? 
Yeah, actually, we have uh, been uh, investing on that on the last three years with the team and everything, and we achieved very nice results here at the, the winery. And uh, we used to have a very nice event called One Day at São Miguel, which is an event made for families with the programs for the kids, with juices and traditional Alentejo games, and also for the parents with the food workshops, with wine workshops, and a big concert with a Portuguese star on the end. And uh, this uh, last edition, we had 1,500 people. Oh, wow. And for the second year in a row that we're not going to have that event. Mm. So, but I think better days will come in terms of fine tourism. Yeah, yeah. But when you have the event, it'll probably be bigger and better than ever. Everyone will be so excited. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> well, Let you know, like I said, I if we'll have money for that at the end. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we all hope. <laughs> but like I said, I've only been to uh, Portugal once, and that was in 2018, and I was in Alentejo, and it's just such an intriguing region. I was really captivated by that commitment to tradition um, and how beautifully it meshed with, you know, modern winemaking techniques and innovation. But really, like you said, the people were just so friendly and open and the food is wonderful. I ate really well there. <laughs> really love the yeah, food. Yeah, food is good. Uh, it's a bit heavy when you live here. Uh, it's uh, traditional food in Alentejo is very simple, but very rich. Mm. Because uh, like I told you, and, until the, the, the end of the day, the ship Alentejo was a very poor region. Yeah. So people, they, they need to to learn how to cook without meat or fish mm -hmm. uh, which is quite hard yeah. so the, the food is very rich in bread and in herbs and in eggs so it's um, it's quite interesting the quantity of wild herbs which are used for the traditional dishes and everything it's very very deep, difficult to make the same in, in even in if you are in Lisbon because in Lisbon they don't have the same uh, the same uh, exactly the herbs that you can find here on the local markets. Great. <laughs> well, I'm going to show the bottles again before we leave, so everyone knows. So the two that we tasted today, two very different <coughs> wines. They're both just beautifully made. You have the amphora, which is really a great homage to tradition, and then you have the dos. Escola. I'm going to let you say it, Alex. <laughs> you you say with me, Escolha. Escolha. Dos. Dos. Enólogos. Enólogos. Escolha dos enólogos. <laughs> Both are $22.99, which is, you know, I know we're all watching our pennies, but very affordable, given that these are family-made, sustainability, really tell a story. They're just really delicious. I mean, at the end of the day, they're delicious. And they really taste, you have a sense of place. Like as I sip these, I'm just having memories of Valentejo pop into my head. So it's been a well, nice escape. <laughs> that's a nice compliment. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, thank it's really you, been Brenda. a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And thank you all for I, watching. I hope to see you soon or in US or in Valentejo. Yes, I hope so too. And, and if I come to visit, fire up that grill. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>